morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice rather than toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to resource, and we want to hear from you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear recommended on the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, love to have you on my team. We can help spread the word. You and I can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and you can make some money. You can get your products at the wholesale price, too. Head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up right from the websites. You can purchase products right off the website, websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our skin health products, Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% gel, without preservatives, without fragrances, just the retinol, just the good stuff, folks. Just the retinol and the vitamin C with a little bit of transdermal delivery chemicals, matrix, I call it my transdermal delivery matrix to increase the penetration, to increase the uh, the depth that the retinol and the vitamin C get to. You know, the action on the skin is not on the surface. If you can feel your skincare product on the surface of your skin, it ain't doing nothing, folks. Uh, You know, you may get a nice feel to the skin, perhaps, as as the surface of the skin is softened, but you're not going to get any long-term effects if you feel your product on the surface. That's why you want to massage a good skincare product. You need to massage into the skin. You want to get deeper into the skin. We facilitate that that penetration with our transdermal delivery matrix, which is in our Truth Balm, as well as our Retinol 5% Gel. You'll also see our Truth Serum and our Omega-6 Healing Cream, all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we have been talking about uh, drugs, the pharmacomedical model, the model of disease, the medical, the, the modern medical model is what I call it, which is a term that was coined by a guy named uh, R.D. Lang, L-A-N-I-N-G. He was a psychiatrist. He wrote an essay back in the early 1970s, and he was the first person to come up with the term modern medical model, or me- he called it the medical model. I call it the modern medical model, and his definition of the medical model involved a lot of the stuff that we rip on every day on this program. Diagnostics, for example, diagnoses. In fact, the, mo- the medical model, as defined by, by Dr. Lang, involved diagnosis and normal. I call it norm and name because it presupposes that there's a normal way that the body should be. And when it's not normal, doctors name how it's not normal. And then you get billed for it. That's the idea of diagnostics. That's the only reason why diagnostics are important as far as, as far as medicine goes. You don't get better by being diagnosed. You don't get better if you know that your problem is in your brain or your ear or your bones or wherever it is. That's because the body breaks down as a system. The body is a system. This notion of systems is, is only 50, 60 years old. You know, the medical model of diagnosing and naming and drugging is, is really eons old, but it didn't get going in a big way until the middle of the 19th century when we figured out how to make chemicals. 
This was the, the birth of the modern medical model. The medical model, as Dr. Lang described it, is millennia, is millennia old. It's since Sumeria, since Babylon, when doctors would uh, see something that wasn't normal and then they'd name it. But the modern medical model really began in the middle of the 19th century when we figured out how to use drugs, how to make drugs, not just use them. They were always been used as herbs, but how to make them. And then they figured out how much profit margin was there, and the model got nailed into place, and it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it is entrenched because of all the money that's in it. You know, chemicals are cheap, 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 cheap. Nutrition's expensive compared to chemicals, drug chemicals, unbelievably cheap. When you talk about profit margins, uh, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals are the ultimate, ultimate profit margin winners. You're talking thousands upon thousands of percent in profit margin. This is why the Rockefellers got involved. And if you, are, you want to read a good book on the Rockefellers and, and pharmacy, or pharma, pharmaceuticals, I should say, get a book called The Drug Story by Morris Beale, B-E-A-L-L-E. Anyway, once, once they figured out how much money was in this thing, the model got nailed into place, and it ain't going nowhere. Even though today, over the last 40 or 50 years, Anyway, since maybe the uh, post-World War II, we've learned that the body's a system. We've learned about systems. Part of th there's a, 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 a division of physics, a, a uh, school of physics, if you will, or a, a, a part of physics called systems theory. Systems theory is high-tech physics. It's the physics of how systems work. And it says that a system is a, a, a device or it's an entity that's made up of many parts that are all interactive, where you can't take one part out without changing the system. The body is such a system. You can't take one part out, you can't drug a part, you can't emphasize a part in your medical treatment without affecting the whole system. That's system, that's part of systems theory, which is part of physics. Quantum physics told us the same thing. You can't start manipulating parts without affecting the whole system. That's, this is how drugs work. This is how medicine works. It takes out parts. That's why doctors think it's okay to take out your gallbladder because they don't know it's part of the system. Or they know it if you told them it was, but it hasn't, the impact of it hasn't really hit home. So they think it's okay to take out a uterus. Oh, you don't need that silly little thing. They don't know that your uterus is connected to your breast and it's connected to your blood and it's connected to your liver and it's connected to the entire set, to your brain, to your stomach, to your intestine. You're going to mess the, everything up. This is why, you guys, you can't just take out an organ. You can't just take out an organ. And I know we rip on doctors, but this is our responsibility. If your doctor says to take out an organ, you better think long and hard about the future impact, even if it seems like it's just your silly little gallbladder. The ultimate example of the dishonesty, the ripoff, the anti-humanity nature of the pharmacomedical model are these new anti-diabetes drugs. I don't want to say the ultimate example, but a classic example. Have you noticed this explosion in anti-diabetic drugs? Drug companies are just tripping all over themselves because of all the diabetes that's out there. So now you got a new class of drugs, Invokana. I just pick on Invokana, but there's actually three of these drugs in this new class of drugs. Invokana just gets my, just really irritates me because of their commercial, Love Your Numbers, which is just in your face about this idea of loving your numbers. Who cares how you feel? It's about your numbers. Most anti-diabetic drugs work with insulin. They'll stimulate its secretion. They'll make cells more sensitive to insulin. Insulin, we said, is a garage door opener. It opens up cells so that nutrients, especially sugar, can get into the cell. This is how the body works. This is how cells work. It's all about the cell, and the cell needs to be fed, and sugar is a food for the cell. And so insulin opens up the, the garage door in a cell, the sugar gets in. When we have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, the garage door opener doesn't work and the sugar builds up in the blood. The importance of insulin is it'll lower blood sugar. So insulin has to be sensitized, has to be sensitive, has to work because the sugar has to go from the blood into the, into the cell via the garage door. All right, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. back 
back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. And, of course, you can check out my blog and the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and our skin health products at truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, if you're on a med, if you're on a, if you're on a blood sugar medication, if you're dealing with diabetes or blood sugar issues, and by the way, you don't have to have an official diagnosis of diabetes to have messed up blood sugar. I would venture to say the vast majority of Americans do have problems with blood sugar, even if, uh, even if they're not officially diagnosed as a diabetic. The official designation of a diabetic, as we've said, with all diagnosis involves statistics and numbers and actuarial tables and really isn't indicative of whether or not our blood sugar is being controlled or not. So you can pretty much rest assured if you get a little, if you have a little, uh, a little belly going on where you never had a belly before, or if you have perhaps some blood pressure issues, um, or if you have eczema or you have psoriasis or you have any kind of chronic degenerative disease, you can pretty much rest assured that you got a blood sugar problem. And, and all the strategies we talk about, eating less food, caloric restriction, fasting, using your B vitamins, using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, using your Sweeties, using Fucoid Z, eating more fiber and veggies, drinking more water after meals. These are all wonderful, awesome strategies for lowering blood sugar that will benefit diabetics, official diabetics, and non-official diabetics diabetics, which is most of us. Alpha lipoic acid is used as a drug to control blood sugar in Europe. Uh, you have to go out of your way to get alpha lipoic acid in the health food store, 400 milligrams a day. Vitamin E, we've talked about that for lowering blood sugar. Vitamin C can help lower blood sugar. I mean, there's just so many ways. Magnesium, selenium, it's nearly endless. Sulfur, MSM, it's nearly endless, the, the strategies we have for lowering our blood sugar and, of course, not eating the sugar. Nobody sprinkles sugar on our head from, a, from the clouds. Blood sugar is an eating issue. Yet we have this, this unbelievable bombardment of nonsensical medical information, pharmacomedical information and pharmacomedical products that we're supposed to buy to lower our blood sugar. Latest is Invokana and a couple of drugs like Invokana. It's high tech, super duper high tech. Most drugs work with insulin. Most of the drugs work to improve the sensitivity or the effects of the garage door opener. The latest way doesn't involve insulin at all. Actually, other drugs involve the intestine. Some of them will keep carbohydrates in the intestine. So you don't, you, you'll eat your carbs, but they won't get into your blood. You'll excrete them. The latest way, though, that's the Invokana way, that affects the kidneys, which is the organ that's responsible for uh, dumping sugar out of the body or not. The kidneys control how much sugar will be in the blood via either eliminating the sugar from the blood or sucking it back up. Remember, sugar is important stuff. So over the course of evolution, we developed these mechanisms for sucking sugar back up into our blood, not losing it, not urinating it out because there wasn't any sugar on the African savannas. So if you had a little sugar, the body conserved it. This is the brilliance, the utter, unbelievable, mind-blowing brilliance of the human body. It has evolved a system to conserve things that it thinks are not around. Well, it doesn't know the last 200 years to the body. That's nothing. That's like a minute. That's like a second to the body. So the body has these mechanisms in place for sucking sugar up. It's called resorption. It sucks sugar back up into the blood from the kidneys. Well, drug companies got the brilliant idea. They're like, okay, well, what if we stop that resorption from happening? What if we poison the kidney? This is how drug companies think. And they never call it poison, of course. They call it inhibiting. That's the kind way of saying, that's a euphemistic way of saying poison. So they said, oh, let's see, glucose, sugar is dumped out in the kidneys. It's uh, sucked back into the kidneys, uh, into the blood from the kidneys. So maybe if we do something to that little junction where the sugar gets sucked up and keep it from getting sucked up, maybe we can lower blood sugar. And of course you can, that's what happens, but you can't do it nicely. You got to poison the kidney. This is how these new drugs work. This is how Invokana works. There's uh, three of these drugs, Farsiga, Farsiga, uh, uh, Jardians, and Invokana. And you see them just pounded. We are pounded with commercials. 